Hello and welcome to Mumblecast, the oddly structured, poorly researched podcast extravaganza. My name is Liam and as always I'm here with my co-host Kayla. Hi. Hello Kayla. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Good. I How- thought about just like pausing to where nothing was said and then we could insert crickets. <laughs> but it- we can still do that. But now you've ruined it by speaking about I it. Know. Oh man. Oh, you win it. It depends who edits it as well, I guess. You can still add a pause in. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Well, it's easy. You just kind of cut it and paste it anyway. How's your week been? It's been all right. How's your week been? Mm, it's been fine. I went to New Orleans for a conference, but I didn't actually do anything in New Orleans. It was like hotel, conference, hotel, home. So that gym. wasn't very fun. I did go to the gym, but there you it go. was one of those things that like, oh, why I wasted 20 bucks going to this gym. It was just a waste of time. Anyway, Nola, get your act together. You've got a big name. You've got three gyms and your coach is a meh. Yeah. Harsh reality. I'm just going to throw it at them. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to get stuck, stuck, stuck straight into it. We're not going to dither around. Basically, this is part two. Everyone who's listened to part one is eagerly anticipating what we're going to talk about now. Because last week we did... Nintendo part one. And we spoke a little bit about the history, how Nintendo got to... Where, or at least the first half of how Nintendo got to where they are. So we're going to quickly recap and then go through basically the 1980s, 1990s and 2000s. Yes. All right. Well, in that case... Well, let's, let's get, get ready, ready to, to mumble. mumble. All right, so what can you tell me about the history of Nintendo, like a quick recap of last week? Okay, I don't remember the guy's name, but he started with playing cards. Yes. And so they did that, and like they were selling a little bit, and then they acquired like rights to Disney, added those to the playing cards, sold a little bit more, and then got into like some other random things, and then like toys and stuff, and then eventually found their way to uh, games. Um, <laughs> Shit, that is, yeah, okay, keep going, keep going. I'm not finished. No, I know that was just like super quick. Keep going. Perfect. Well, yeah, that it's was perfect. the first part That's of it. Yeah, yeah. You're, right, you're right. And then, so basically, what happened? They were doing this like like little little games, like with light guns and things like that. And then they, this one guy, what was his name? Maimoto was one of them. But then there was another one too. And the other one was like a he. He didn't like wasn't very big up in the company, but then they brought him in and he like helped design. I think it was Donkey Kong, and that kind of like was a huge hit. Gunpei Yoko Yokoi. Okay, he was the one who invented toys that grabby toy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he he was help. He was designing Donkey Kong with Maimoto's Maimoto. uh, assistance. Yep, but I think he ended up doing most of that. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. So then. They kind of got into that kind of stuff, and then like arcade games, and then um, Donkey Kong was like had Jumpman in it, and that was like the first introduction of Mario, and that pretty much takes us up to where we could stop that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So <clears throat> as you said, they'd gone to arcade games. They introduced Donkey Kong with Mario, and that was where, and that was about nineteen seventy, late nineteen seventies. Mm-hmm. Not sure exactly when, probably seventy eight or something. And that's where we're going to start from. Yes. So, as you mentioned, they had started doing a couple of games for the arcades, mm-hmm. specifically. And they were going really well. So well, in fact, that a number of, in the early 80s, as household game consoles started taking off, a lot of the big manufacturers wanted to port, which is a term used when you trans- or you take a game's script and you mm-hmm. transfer it to another uh, system. Okay. So they wanted to port the games from arcade to these home consoles, such as Atari, uh, the ColecoVision, um, and Television, all these weird sort of names. Mm-hmm. So that's what they they started to do, and Nintendo were more than happy to do that. So they you know gave away the rights to Donkey Kong and a few other mm-hmm. things, and they started creating games in these consoles, and, and that went really well. And right. from that, Nintendo were like, hold on. We should get in on this. You know, this is a big business. We should get yeah. we should get our finger in this pie. Which is exactly what they attempted to do. So in the early eighties, in nineteen eighty two, they started to develop uh, on their own system. Initially it was called the AVS Advanced Video System. Mm-hmm. Very similar to the Atari four hundred and the Commodore sixty four. But it never went into manufacture. There was a couple of things that they just didn't quite have right and they were still working on, so they uh it couldn't work through that. Following that, in July 1983, Nintendo, having worked out a few kinks in the system, released the Famicom. Have you ever heard of the Famicom? I have not. So the Famicom stands for Family Computer, and it was actually first initially released only in Japan. did very well, sold over half a million units. However, 
it's kind of following on from the AVS system, it did have some problems. Some of the, the chips would malfunction within it and that you had to recall quite a few of them and end up losing quite a lot of money um, mm. with that. So well, they, as in, overall, that was fine, but they, they did lose over half a million dollars of recalling a whole bunch of units. Yeah. So this wasn't great. And this was 1983. Okay. Or 1982, 1983. They didn't, however, at this point, release it into the US market. Uh, they were really wanting to, uh, and once they had worked out some of the kinks, they started to look at the US market. However, they'd never hit that market before mm-hmm. with their products, so they needed some help, or they were looking for some help. So then they contacted some of the big guns like Atari to try and help them. However, negotiations with Atari didn't work very well, so they end up not, at that time, distributing in the US. Mm-hmm. And secretly, that could be actually a bit of a blessing in skies. Okay. So, so far, they've created the Famicom. It's 1983, and, you know, consoles are selling all about this place. Mm-hmm. However, have you ever heard of the great video game Crash? No. Okay, so, with all these systems coming out, Atari, Commodore, the Click, which all these ones are mentioned, they yeah. were all creating, they, they, was, they were selling out. Lots of people were buying them, especially, you know, the US, North America, they were all buying these systems. Mm-hmm. However... For the systems, they wanted games. So people started mash producing games of all sorts. Nobody had any real control over who would make games and how they would be created. Okay. So essentially, these expensive systems were coming out with expensive games, and people were buying them all. However, the games were crap. 90% of them, or not 90%, that's a big margin, but a massive amount of the games were so bad that people would spend money on them, and then get a really sour taste because they were awful games and it just ruined everything. And they wouldn't buy anymore. Exactly. So one of the most famous ones is E.T. The E.T. game came out <laughs> and is world-renowned known for being one of the worst video games of all time. Unplayable type video games. Really? But people bought it because it was E.T. and it came out at the same time as the movie. And this was like the straw that brought the cameras back. So pretty much there was a big crash. Nobody started buying video game consoles. Video, they were still being mass produced. They were in all the shops, but mm-hmm. nobody was buying them. Right. So between 1983 and 1985, the video game market absolutely disappeared. It went from, like, <clears throat> I think there's a there's a number somewhere. I can't remember where it is. I've got it, have I got it here? Let me see. I don't, but it, it basically dropped a massive amount. Almost no households were selling them at all anymore. Uh, okay. Places were selling them at all. So... This was quite a good time because this is allowed Nintendo sort of redefine and re-adjust um, their Famicom because this hasn't been sold at this point, mm-hmm. at least not in North America. So we had the video game crash, and apparently in North America, 97% of sales decreased. So it went Damn. from, yeah, basically if you sold 100, only three were getting sold per year, if that wow. was the kind of number. So it was a massive crash, and yeah. it was pretty big blow to the the video game market. However... In 1985, Nintendo finally released the Famicom Worldwide. At this point, they changed the Famicom to the name that you may know it as, as the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment mm-hmm. System, and they changed the look of it slightly. So it was like an orange, creamy thing before, and now it was that kind of grey box with that mm-hmm. black letter right, or black thing right, and the wee yeah. cartridge go inside. So that's how it was sold. North America was still a little bit uh, about games consoles. Okay. So... They tried to sell it slightly differently. What they did initially was they sold it with along with a toy robot, a couple of games, a couple of controllers, but they really marketed this robot because they didn't want to sell it as a games console. They wanted to sell it as an interactive robot type playing mm-hmm. thing. And they only sold it in New York City. So they shipped some like 9,000 across New York City and sold them there. And it sold out really impressively. Okay. So then this happened in October of 1985. They then, with the success, they end up selling it in LA in, in February. Uh, followed by Chicago, San Francisco, and then by the end of 1986, they sold it all across America. Hmm. And to massive success. A couple of things helped them here. One, the fact that the market had absolutely stopped, and mm-hmm. Nintendo released this games console, which seemed to be quite coherent, and it worked, and there wasn't any problems. The second thing is what they did with their games, which is what they still do to this day, and is somewhat revolutionary. They limited who could produce games. So Nintendo themselves could produce as many games as they want, but they also had the limited secondary or third-party production companies to how many games they could produce, and they could only sell them if they had the seal of approval from Nintendo. 
Okay. In addition, Nintendo created a chip that you had to go in the game so that you couldn't fake a game or you couldn't make a game without their approval. You had to have this chip. In addition to that, to really limit the market, to make sure it was only quality went out, they limited companies to only five games per year. Now, many of these companies got around this by creating like subsidiary companies and creating games through them. Yeah. But that was initially what they did. So within the first year, they only had about 15 games or 15, yeah, for 15 games from Nintendo, but they were all quality games. Mm-hmm. And this is what helped the success of Nintendo. Games such as Super Mario Brothers, um, Metroid, um, Super Mario Bros. 2, uh, obviously, obviously things like Donkey Kong, the ones that mm-hmm. came over from the arcade. Uh, in 1987, you had Link, the event, uh, Adventures of Zelda come out. Yeah. And these were all, well, some of them on my Miyamoto, um, Metroid wasn't. And it just basically blew up. The NES just became the console. There was nothing else to even compare. Mm-hmm. Let's see if we've got anything else. What about Pikmin? That didn't actually come out until a lot later. Okay. Yeah, you'd be surprised how late, late Pikmin came out. Okay. In 1988, they released a part of Nintendo Power magazine, which is there was their basically a magazine that came out. It talked about the games, the new releases, and sort of how to complete the games. You know how they used to have walkthroughs, basically? Yeah. That was Nintendo's version of that, and that was really good. And that sold. That actually ceased production in only 2012, I think. Or 2002, okay. I can't remember. But... um. So that went on for a while. So that's taken them through the 80s. So 85 to basically uh, 1990. They were just, you know, absolutely dominating the market massively. Mm-hmm. In the 1990s, things started to, oh, they went, they wanted a little bit more. They wanted to go to the next level. So the next level for them, they thought, okay, we have the Game & Watch. What can we do to make something similar to the Game & Watch, but better? And that's when the infamous Game Boy came out. So uh, you're Yokoi, who was one of his main designers in Game mm-hmm. & Watch, he helped um, create the Game Boy, which is the, the Game Boy, that you, the big chunky one, the mm-hmm. green screen. And they sold that along with one of the biggest games of all time ever. Do you know what it is? Mario? Do, 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 oh, do, Tetris. Do. Yeah. So this Russian slash Turkish game, um, they sold with the Game Boy, and it, was, it went crazy. Mill- millions of people bought it. It wasn't pushed towards kids, it was pushed towards everyone. Your commuter, mm-hmm. you're on your Game Boy, you know, so it wasn't just a kid-based thing. Everyone wanted this thing. You had interchangeable cartridges, which was great. There was other consoles at the time that were similar, like Microvision um, from Micro, Milton Bradley Company and a few others. But what made this one great was it was simple. It had a D-pad, it had two buttons, A, B. It had a grey green screen, which only had about I think I have a number. It's something like four shades of grey. It's not very many okay. shades of grey. And and it had four AA batteries, which lasted for a long time. You get 10 hours of battery life, oh, wow. which was remarkable. Yeah. They were going to go for coloured screen, but the battery life and the sort of complexity kept them at the grey one, which actually turned out to be mm-hmm. perfect for them. It, how, do you know, can you guess how many um, that the original Game Boy sold? Millions. Yeah. 118 million units oh, wow. were sold, which is crazy. On top of this, like games like Tetris sold, I think 20, 30 million or something. Mm-hmm. You know, Super Mario Brothers sold like 14 million. They were just crazy. It was fantastic. It was a big thing for them. It really helped them through the 90s. Also, in things like 95, yeah. Pokemon came out for the Game Boy. The red and green in Japan, or red and blue everywhere else, and it just help the Game Boy go even further. It was yeah. it was a really big thing for them. Which was a great one. However, when it comes back to the home video console market, things were kind of things were getting impressive. In the early nineteen nineties, Sega released their console. Do you know what that's called? Genesis? Oh okay. you guys had it at Genesis yeah, It was a Sega Mega Sega Mega Drive in my country. Okay. I don't know where it was actually in Japan. But they brought that out and that was that was the next generation. That was the 16-bit console, and it was better graphics. It had their own. It was their own um, mascot in Sonic, mm-hmm. and it was kind of pushed upon as like attitude, and it was like it had a, a real 90s feel about it. Mm-hmm. It was black. It had this new curved controller, three buttons, and all this sort of stuff. So that was pushed a lot, and that actually ended up taking over a, a large part of the Nintendo market in the US. 
their market went from about 80 to 90 percent all the way down to about 35 oh, wow. where sega took up the kind of the slack yeah. there which was massive obviously nintendo had been out for a while but that's what they're doing so in the early 90s sega was earning money don't get me wrong net the nintendo was still earning good money but they needed to come back hard so what did they do well the f- what they did was they bring out their basic their own version. They brought out the Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. This was um, announced actually back in 80, 89, I believe. It was released in Japan in 1990, then 91 for US. Okay. And it sold out real quick. It sold 1.6 million units in, in uh, Japan within the first six months, which is a lot. Uh, and it kind of took off from there. Now, it didn't immediately beat out Sega initially, mm-hmm. but as it its lifespan went on and the games like Zelda and Donkey Kong and Mario Brothers and Mario Kart, all that came out for mm-hmm. it, it started to really dominate. And these are all the games that are still reiterated today to some yeah. degree. So this, 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 was, this was massive and it was um, a big part of the 90s. What consoles did you have? I had PlayStation. Oh, so you don't have a hand before that? Well, the, I, that and Game Boy Color. Okay. So that, that, I, they're I coming up. That's all right. Games. So we got, we actually had the Nets, which is really unusual for my family thinking about it. And I can't remember what age I was that got it, but I'm really surprised mom and dad got us that. Especially because it was probably around the Sega time, which was cheaper, I think, at one point. But we ended up getting the NES. Or maybe it was when the Super Nintendo came out, we got the old one. I can't remember how it was. Yeah. Anyway, but that's what we got. And I loved the hell of that console. Only Nintendo thing I ever had, though, other than Game Boy. All right, so we've come into the mid-90s now. And yeah. things are starting to heat up. In the early or late 80s, early 90s, something came about called the compact disc. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with this CD. disc? A CD, exactly. So this started to come out and that was what was looking to the future. Yes. So in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, Nintendo actually had started development of CD-ROM. Okay. And they had actually got together with a very familiar company called Sony. Yeah. And they had started to build their own combination of Nintendo CD drive, essentially. They were. They basically had a had it designed and created. Mm-hmm. There's a there's copies of it you can find online, and you can see. I believe there's completed versions of it in Nintendo's kind of headquarters. Mm-hmm. However, Nintendo or Sony wanted more rights to the. Or I suggested that Sony wanted more of the rights to the CD drive. They wanted to have that as their intellectual property, mm-hmm. and every CD that was sold, they wanted a big cut of. Nintendo being the way they are, they were like, nah, mm-hmm. not happening. So they stopped that deal. Oh, mm-hmm. and it was actually going to be called the Nintendo PlayStation. Really? Interesting, yeah. Crazy. So, they, probably the biggest misstep they've ever made. Yeah. They got out of business with Sony and then got in with another company called Philips. Have you heard of Philips Electronic? Yeah. So that's who they got in business with. They started to make a console with Philips CD. Never actually happened. Yeah. That never came to fruition. Um, just It just didn't seem to work. But guess who continued their work? Sony. Sony and continued their work. And they did. So they continued their work on the PlayStation 3 at that time. So early in the 90s, they were working on it. Uh, and having left that partnership, they were sort of a little bit in the struggle street. So by the mid-90s, Sega had taken a big part of the market for a big portion of it. And then they started to move to their Sega Mega CD drive. I think that was maybe the Genesis. I can't remember. Anyway, which way. they moved to the CD drive. PlayStation, by 1995, had introduced the Sony PlayStation CDs. CDs could hold more data, um, which was I means kind of bigger, more expansive, better mm-hmm. graphics, better games and stuff. So they had powered this forward, and that started to take off massively. Mm-hmm. Now, what a big issue was, Nintendo hadn't, didn't have another console ready. So PlayStation went for about two years, along with the Sega Mega CD drive, out for about two years before there was any competition. Yeah. So they just absolutely encapsulated the market. You know, so like Nintendo basically had nothing going on. Yeah. They weren't like, okay, fuck, we need to get something out. So they actually introduced something else. Any ideas what it might be? Mm. Probably not, because there wasn't many made and they were taken off the shelves no. real quickly. So it's called the uh, uh, Nintendo Virtual Boy. Okay. So it was like a VR headset that they put on. Huh. Okay. And used the the depth section of your vision, basically, to mm-hmm. create a 3D image. And it did work, but it was all red, it gave people headaches, and it was it was just bad. Yeah. It was just bad, bad, bad. I think they sold, I think they made like 13,000 of them 
or 6,000, I can't remember. Okay. And they did not sell very well. In fact, you could say they sold very, very poorly. Oh, God, that looks... And it looks, like, very cumbersome, too. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that didn't do very well. That was another Yokoi um, production. Okay. Um, and, yeah, it, 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 it kind of... It hurt them a lot. They put a lot of money into it, a lot of time hoping it would work, and it kind of fell flat on its face. Yep. So they're in a bit of struggle street. What they have also got in development on the when they do this, because this was tried to like keep the name in the market. They've actually been working on something called the Ultra, uh, what's it called, the Ultra sixty four. Okay. Which was their sixty four bit um, console. Like Nintendo. Like yes, exactly. Yeah, like- it turns into the Nintendo sixty four. So they, they, in nineteen ninety four, they they claimed, sorry, yeah, they they introduced plans for it in nineteen ninety three, and they were just working on it, but they just couldn't quite get it right. Mm-hmm. They kept on working through it, trying to make sure they could get the the system working. The name changed from Ultra sixty four to Nintendo sixty four due to the rights that some other companies had with the word Ultra. Like Konami had the uh, a system called Ultra Football and Ultra Tennis. Or at least oh, okay. games for systems called yeah. Ultra Football, Ultra Tennis. So therefore, Nintendo changed the name to Nintendo 64 in 1995. Okay. And it was announced it would be released in 1996. So you'd have PlayStation had been out for a bit longer, Sega. So again, mm-hmm. they've really got to fight into this market. Yeah. It was going to be released with some of... The, yeah, they showed... they showed In 1996, they showed several sort of games with it, like Super Mario 64... Finally, in June the 23rd, 1996, the Nintendo 64 was released, selling over half a million units in Japan on the first day of release. Yeah. Uh, and then in September 29th, 1996, it was released in North America, selling about 350,000 units. Um, it was, they kind of really marketed it high and pushing it towards people. Um, but they often felt that it, it lacked software. So essentially, they released it in a, almost in a rush and they didn't have the right games to really appeal to people because they just wanted to get it out because they felt like they were going further and further behind. Okay. In addition, they did not yet transfer to compact discs. They stuck with the cartridge system. Now, there's good and bad things about that. One, what what was one of the worst things you remember about CDs? They get scratched. Perfect. That's one of them. Yeah, exactly. Cartridge is pretty much indestructible. Mm-hmm. You can find cartridges from the 80s that are still working in the 10s yeah. now. Yeah. Second thing, right, do you remember the noise or loading? Yeah. Does not happen with a cartridge. All the information is on the cartridge. So it doesn't have to, the laser disc has to look through the CD, try and okay. find it. And that's what the loading screen is, try to find the data. Yeah. Cartridge right there. So there's no loading screens in Sten64, which okay. made it quite appealing, especially in the early days where there wasn't very fast processing for the PlayStation. I remember waiting ages for things to load. Yeah. So that was small benefits, but people did look at it as being behind the times. Yeah. Yeah, so they ended up obviously bringing out some big games in N64. As I said, Donkey Kong Country 3D, uh, sorry, Donkey Kong Country 64, which was like the one after the Super NES version. Mm -hmm. You obviously had a number of Pokemon, Stadium, and other things like that. You had um, the Mario Brother, uh, Super Mario 64, which was the the first 3D version, which was Mm -hmm. massive. People loved that game. Mario Kart again, Super Smash Bros came out which was another big franchise for or was going mm-hmm. to be a big franchise for them GoldenEye came out on N64 considered one of the best games of all time I think it's mainly because of what it multiplayer and mm-hmm. the first button shooting style and all that sort of stuff yeah. it was a big patch of that and new, numerous uh, numerous other games another Legend of Zelda yeah, came out I think Zelda. the Ocarina of Time was that one and uh, yeah so that did end up coming big. it still wasn't as popular as PlayStation PlayStation was dominant in that year yeah. Uh, Genesis pretty much fell apart to some degree, the Sega, but really? it held its own. And with going through time, it, it did get better and better. Around the same time, the Game Boy Color would was, was released. That's the one I had. That's the one. That, yeah, so that's the one. It wasn't accurate colors, which was weird, but it was colorful, yeah. which helped. So that was about ninety seven. That was, uh, I think it was ninety seven. Mm, yeah, I think it was about ninety seven. The Game Boy Color ninety eight was Game Boy Color was released. I didn't have a Game Boy Color. I had a Game Boy Pocket. Mm-hmm. But not a Game Boy Color. And Game a Bo- Color and an Advance. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So this takes us up pretty much to the early 2000s. Does that make sense? About, yeah. Yeah. Have I rushed through this? I feel like I have. No, you have I think, yeah, you're there's good. A, there's a lot to talk about. No, we're... In that era, that era was more... That was very push and shove a lot more, but I just kind of rushed over it because... 
yeah. we've got a lot to talk about. Because Gen 2 came. Oh, I, I, I consider this Gen 2 of the console wars. Some people don't, but kind of is. Okay. Okay, it's because in the early 2000s, PlayStation 2 was released. And that mm-hmm. is still to this That's day the, the biggest selling console of all time. It's considered really? to be probably the best one. console of all time, to some degree, if you know what I'm saying. Um, at the same time, Microsoft got into the business and they released their mm-hmm. Xbox. These are both CD-ROM driven um, DVD players that had a good amount of memory, good processing power. You could play multiple people on the same console. Mm -hmm. You connect to the internet, all this sort of stuff, all this modern moving forward. Nintendo didn't have anything. Nintendo, again, were behind the time was trying to get things released here. They did manage to release the Game Boy Advance in 2001 um, in March and then June in Europe. And later in the US, which did very well. And then finally, also in 2001, they managed to release the GameCube. You familiar Never with the had, GameCube? No. So I got a GameCube maybe about 15 years after this. And okay. it was a fine console. I quite enjoyed it. Okay. A couple of things that people were a bit eh about. It was small and compact. It was, it mm-hmm. was literally a cube. It had an 8-inch disc instead of the usual, I want to say 11, but I don't know. Maybe it was 10. They had a smaller disc. Okay. Okay. This was their attempt to stop people copying, and because they had, okay. they spoke to what was the company called? I can't remember. But some company that makes these discs, like one of these, you'd know the name. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and so they had the small disc, and they had their games. Now, it was weird because some people saw this as it was a lesser console, but many people actually saw what it really was. It was a very powerful console. Mm-hmm. It had a great ability. You could connect to the internet in a format that the others couldn't. Um, you had you know, ways of memory, memory and all that sort of stuff, but it did kind of flop. It wasn't the biggest selling console by any means, and it really did put Nintendo on quite a struggle street. I know what one looks like. It, was, oh. it, it came out with a classic purple. I think it came out in black later on, but I, I quite liked it. As yeah. I said, I got it way after I had a PlayStation and Xbox just for funsies. Mm-hmm. And I could play like, all the Mario titles came out for it. Mario, uh, Super Mario Galaxy came out on it. Okay. Now, that, was, that was a really, really popular game. Mm-hmm. That was, um, again, it was him, them taking Mario to 3D, but more expansive. And that was probably one of the best Mario games mm-hmm. out there, people okay. say. Pikmin. They had um, Pikmin on it. And that's, that's when Pikmin first came about. Okay. Was it that one or was it 64? Maybe in 64 Pikmin, actually. I can't remember. That was another mm-hmm. Miyamoto invention. And that was in the later consoles. So it was either Cube or the, um, the N- N64. I think, I think I want to say N64, but Luigi's I don't know Luigi's sure. Mansion? Metal Gear Solid? Oh, yeah. So Luigi's Mansion. So that was another... They didn't bring out a Nintendo uh, Mario game initially. The Get Mario Galaxy came out a year or so later. Mm-hmm. Luigi's Mansion was a game that was sold... As it opened, which mm-hmm. people were like, eh, with but Mario, apparently that's a really good game. Uh, yeah, and you said, as you said, Pikmin, and eventually Smash Bros. Melee came out, and basically all the titles they have, mm-hmm. that they typically have. I think by this time it was on like Mario Kart 4 or 5. It was like Double Dash or something it was called. Anyway, that was good. Um, during these times, there was uh, some changeover with people um, that kind of worked there. Um... Well, actually, I should have mentioned, in 1997, the Game Boy and Metroid creator Gunpei Yokoi died in a car accident. He had left Nintendo and started wanting to create his own kind of business. I think he had started to, but unfortunately he did uh, die in a car accident, which is pretty sad. Um, And then, in 2002, Minoru Arakawa resigned as president of the Nintendo, uh, and Tatsumi... Kimishima um, was his successor. Okay. Yes, but then in 2002, also in uh, 2002, Hiroshima Yamauchi mm-hmm. stepped down as the president of Nintendo and Satoru Iwata became the president as well. Okay. So two big names that kind of did a lot for the business bailed out in 2002. They were probably really old by then. Yeah, they would have been very old, I think. So what did what did you have in this generation? You had a PS2. I had the PS1. I just looked it up. 
Did you have Did you have a PS2 at all? No. no. Okay. I had PlayStation One, Game Boy, and Game or Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance. Oh, no, that was it. That was it. What did Drake have? You must have. Oh, he had all of them. It. He had all of them. Yeah. So I I, I didn't have. I went, I had PlayStation, then I went to Xbox in the second generation. Mm-hmm. I didn't have the PS2. And I loved the Xbox controller, and that's why I still have today. Okay. Um, and I got this again, I said, for fun. I stayed yeah. away from the PS2, and I've stayed away from PlayStation since. He had Xbox later on, I think 360. Yeah, so that's the next gen we're going to get into in a moment, yeah. but yeah. So they're really struggling. They're not really struggling, but they're sort of, they're not at the high that they once were. Yeah. Next generation things come out. So the next big ish thing for them was the Nintendo DS. Nintendo oh, yeah, was that. announced in 2004 and released on November the 21st, 2004, with over 3 million pre orders. This was a big, big boost to Nintendo. This was, had a very similar concept to the Game & Watch with a dual screen. However, they had one active screen and one touch screen. So it made it introduce a whole many different ways of playing and mm-hmm. working with games. You could play Game Boy Advance games and the new small kind of memory disc, memory card type size mm-hmm. DS games. And as I said, as you said, it sold millions. The graphics were pretty impressive for a handheld console. It was colored. It was much better than the... Than, it, was, it wasn't better. I had a PlayStation PS. Uh, PSP. PSP. Yeah. And it was great. It, it, it was ahead of its time. Yeah. If it was released now, it, was, it could still sell. It had CDs that ran really smooth, real nice configuration. You could go on the internet, you could like, browse, it was great. Oh, wow. But it just wasn't the right time for it. This yeah. DS was everything what they wanted. Yeah. Um, kids bought it, grown-ups bought it, all this sort of stuff. I had yeah. one. Do you have one? No, my sister did, and I hated it because she was obsessed. I had a DS Lite, actually, not the original DS, but anyway. Um, and that came out, and that, that just kind of really helped the company kind of boost themselves forward. Again, it's still got the same concept of proprietary um, IP, all their mm-hmm. characters. You can still only create games if you're set in production companies and all this sort of stuff, but mm-hmm. it, it just sold. <laughs> it sold really well. So th- this, th- this opened in 2004, and it's kind of helping them boost up again. Now, using some of the ideas that they're getting from this, how they're trying to appeal to all different generations, everyone's playing various of games, whether it's a brain game, whether it's a Mario game, whether it's something mm-hmm. else, a kid's game. Things like Animal Crossing and Nintendogs came out, which people mm-hmm. loved, and it sort of helped Nintendo tailor their way around the next steps. Mm-hmm. At the same time, as we mentioned, PS3 uh, is coming out soon. Okay. May already be out, I can't quite remember. That's the one we had. And Nintendo 64, uh, and Xbox 360, yeah. which was massive. I think in this generation, 360 ended up winning, sort mm-hmm. of the war as such, yeah. between PlayStation and 360 this next console put up a, a pretty a pretty impressive fight yeah because in 2005 no that's a lie yeah in 2005 e3 2005 remember we spoke about e3 last time mm-hmm. um nintendo displayed the first prototype of the next gen system which was codenamed nintendo revolution which is now known as the wii the wii the, the controller was revealed at the tokyo game show later that year what was special about the controller in this one do you remember uh, it was handheld, like yeah. the like long stick. Mm-hmm. So you had the the main controller, which was back to a D-pad, two triggers, and two buttons. And then they had what they called a nunchuck, was what attached to it, and oh, you yeah. held it in your opposite hand, which just had a um, dual had a thumbstick. Yeah, and that was all they had. But in addition to all that, it was motion controlled, which was hadn't been done before to mm-hmm. this degree. People initially looked at it skeptical, were very skeptical about it. Not looked at it skeptical. <laughs> and they weren't sure if it was going to be a success or not. The way it was marketed, it was really marketed to our family entertainment and like working out together and like getting fun time with the game. And hardcore gamers, especially the ones that were now used to 360 and the PS3, were like, what are you talking about? This has just got, what are you doing? What are you ruining you know, gaming for us? Mm-hmm. However, it did really well. It did. <laughs> Let me just find the I numbers. Um, so, now it was, I mentioned 2004, it was spoken about, it wasn't actually until 2006 it was released. And it was released in November 19th, 2006 in the US, followed by a Japanese launch on December the 2nd. So it was actually released first in the US and then Australia and then Europe by uh, mid December. 
the console sold fast and it was um, a big breakthrough for Nintendo. They picked up the pace that they lost from the last console, the GameCube, and the, um, the, the marketing of the product went so well and a big focus on the fan-based games along with adults and children alike so they can open to a larger demographic. And there was basically not a household in America that didn't have a Wii at some point. Yeah. You know, every family had a Wii. It was very cheap. It was something like 150 bucks to buy originally. Mm-hmm. So it was dead cheap. And it, it just it just dominated. Um, other companies were, were caught really unprepared by this. So Sony and Microsoft were just didn't know what to do and they didn't they couldn't hit the same demographic. And, and they didn't hit the same demographic until a lot later. And even then, because I think really. you had the PlayStation Play, if you remember that, it had like, no, the, the two the Kinect, microphone looking and things. The and the Kinect, yeah. Both of them, big flops. But this, we absolutely dominated. Yeah. It sold millions and millions of copies. Or millions and millions of units. Um, this went on for a while. Um, but obviously it starts to die down. Two reasons. One, because it sold so many, everyone had one. If you go into any sort of secondhand shop now, they're full of Wii's and Wii games, but and, they, and it was limited. You know, yeah. you, you didn't you didn't have the gamer market. Gamers who go back and play games and buy new games want the Wii owners. They were families that play Wii sports for a couple of weeks and stop. Yeah. You know, other than big titles like Zelda and Mario, people want to come back to Guitar it. Hero. Yeah, Guitar Hero. Well, Guitar Hero wasn't all, all three of them, so that was yeah good, but um. That was struggles. That was that was good, but as you start to lose that, you've got to come back with something else. Yeah. The next choice, God, this is going on, guys. Sorry, was not a very successful console. Do you know what the next one is? This no. was in 2011 when they released. Oh, so well, actually, 2011 they released the the next handheld, which is a 3DS. That yeah. sold. That sold all right. I think it sold in about 40 million copies. Uh, okay. Or, I think million. that's the one my sister had. That was okay. It was. Maybe. People end up thinking it's a bit unnecessary. It wasn't really required. It didn't really 3D. Very much. Some people used it, but it was just easy to play without the 3D yeah. concept of it. The Nintendo DS XL sold more copies okay. than anything else. Um, and then you had the 2DS, which was really weird. It was like a straight flat tablet that had still had two screens that just didn't fold in half. It was weird. Weird. What was their console, though? You should know. Wii U. Yeah. The Wii U was their next console. That didn't do well. No, nah, not particularly. I have one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on April twenty fifth, two thousand and eleven, Nintendo confirmed that they were making a new console for the release uh, to be released in two thousand and twelve. Um, the console was announced to be named the Wii U. Uh, the first it was going to be the first console that was going to play ten eighty p, and it was you know meant to be a big deal. And part of it was they ended up having a controller with a, a touch screen, interactive touch screen on it, along with dual. Uh, thumbsticks, a D-pad, four different buttons, you know, it got all the stuff that all these other ones have, mm-hmm. all the buttons wise, and had the screen which was unique, it still had motion control in the, the yeah, I don't the, like that part, the the console, or the handheld console part, and you could also play games on it, without having, without having on. to look at the TV, yep. which was which was a big deal, but, you know, it, it plays in the things that come. Many com- uh, gamers are confused about it, after the press conference, not quite sure knowing is it a home console, is it a handheld console? Like, it, how is it different to the, the Wii other than having 1080p? Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, they weren't sure if it was just a console for the Wii, like a controller for the Wii, or was it a new console? Like, even me, up until relatively recently, I didn't realize it was a whole new console. Yeah. I thought it was just the handheld thing that attached to the Wii. So it was pretty confusing. <laughs> Uh, It released in November 2012 in North America and Europe and Asia following Mm -hmm. that. And it did okay. I don't actually have the figures for how much it sold, but it was nowhere near as popular as the Wii. They did bring out games for it, like new generations of each of the Marios and stuff, but it wasn't great. You could back compatibility play the the Mm -hmm. Nintendo games, which was good. Obviously, the CD ones, not the... So you could still play the GameCube ones on them. You could actually do that on the Wii as well. You could play GameCube. Yeah, you can play GameCube on Wii and, and Wii U. Even though they're smaller? Yeah. Oh. So that's, that's, that's one cool thing, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that was something. It was not the biggest console. It didn't do very well, and people were a little bit worried about Nintendo's future following this. 
some things I should mention the, about the DS actually. It also had, you could also connect online to the DS. So you could actually browse the web on the DS okay. to some degree. And you could play multiplayer games on DS with other people, which was really cool. Like if I was in like close by on the same Wi-Fi as you with my DS, we could link up and play games with That's each other cool. against each other, which other consoles didn't have. Yeah. Especially handheld. But you have to know someone else with a DS. That's why I think lots of kids like, liked it. Okay, so this takes up to pretty much about 2012. Um, in 2015, Satoru Awata died um, at the age of 55. And following his death, Shiguru Miyamoto and Gen- Gen- Geno Taikada uh, jointly led the company um, on an interim basis until Tatsumi Kimishimusha, Kim- Kimishima, Kimishima mm-hmm. appointed... Uh, a successor was appointed as a successor. Uh, Miyamoto was named a uh, creative fellow, uh, and Takeda was named technological fellow. So mm-hmm. they weren't ruined, they weren't like taken away out of the roles, they're just position- repositioned. So this takes us to the latest console. Do you know what it is? The Switch, the Nintendo Switch. So in October 2006, Nintendo revealed a new system called Nintendo Switch. Uh, and it was released on March 2017. So that was quite interesting because they released it and it was out on the shelves within six months, which oh, wow. is unusual for a console. And I remember seeing it being advertised as like, this is kind of cool. Like, I'm not mad at this at all. Um, it's a hybrid video game console and attachable controllers uh, with an emphasis on portability and uh, on-the-go multiplayer uh, in contrast to compare with PlayStation 4 and, P- and Xbox One, which are very much online, home-based consoles. Mm-hmm. This console essentially has a screen that you can have two detachable controllers on the side that you can either play looking at the screen and you can okay. play it portably, you can take it on a plane, or as a dock that you can put it in and it'll connect to your TV and you can take controllers off and play with them. In addition, these controllers can be used individually, turned on the side, mm-hmm. and you can have like one-on-one, two players, or you can have, you can have a full-on game cube type controller and be using that. So there's many different configurations which mm-hmm. you can use this. In addition, it brought out some big games, Mario Odyssey, which is another kind of Mario game, obviously. You've got Zelda Breath of the Wild. You had um, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which has kind of just come out more recently. Uh, The normal sort of iteration of Nintendo Mm -hmm. games are coming out, and more and more games are getting announced uh, more recently. Additionally to this, more big-time games. So like Skyrim, which is a massive game that came out in Mm -hmm. about 2005, and big PC game, big Xbox game. It's been, it's been played since then. You know, that's the 12 years ago. That's come out on it. So it's a big, long, expansive RPG. Mm-hmm. That's come out on it. Um, what was it? What do I... Well, if you listen to last week, I can tell you what other games are announced. But basically, more and more games are announced. It's done quite well for okay. a Nintendo console. And it seems weird to say for a Nintendo console. But it is kind of the way it is. After, since the Wii, they've not had yeah. many breakthroughs. Xbox One and PS3 have definitely, uh, PS4 have definitely sold them. PS4, I think, has won this generation, as they call it. So, um, I think you're going. Nope, you're good. Uh, but they came out about three years before the Switch came out. Yeah. So the Wii U was their competition, essentially, to PS4 and Xbox, which didn't do very well. And then they brought out the Switch. So they almost jumped a generation. Okay. Although Wii U was like a, a 0.5 of the generation, you know? Yeah. A 3.5 rather than 4. And this is their new version of it what do you mean what do you, you want to say something there hasn't been much created recently it's been like almost four years four years since that well the switch only came out three years ago okay so well, it, end of 2006 ago. 2007 xbox one was xbox one was about five years ago yeah i bought that when i was in the netherlands well maybe more than that. maybe it might have been six or seven years ago yeah that must have come out about six years ago playstation 4 was forever ago yeah so there's the playstation the the PlayStation had a PlayStation Pro that came out, which was a, a kind of upgraded version of the PS4, okay. which had like better graphics and better processing. Yeah, color. I mean, they all like had the little updates. And but... then the Xbox had the Xbox One X, which again and was like a very slum. similar. And then the Xbox S as well. Xbox recently, re- re- we spoke about uh, Project Scarlet, which mm-hmm. is their new console. Yeah. PS4, PlayStation has yet to announce something, I think. I'm not sure if they've okay. actually announced a physical console. So there console. should be something, like we're due for something. Within the next year or two, yeah. Okay. I think it's good. So each, between the NES and the Super NES was about two years, three yeah. years. Between the Super NES and then 64 was another three, four years. Between that and then 
the GameCube was maybe four or five years. Okay. So each each generation, the time span's like, increasing. Two reasons. One, they're building consoles that have got more capacity than the games. Yeah. So the games... Uh, initially was the games pushed a console. And now the console pushes the games. Yeah. And that's why they've got more life out of it. And on top of things like online servers doing a lot of the work, like Fortnite, like that has expanded people as in you can play that on Switch, PS PlayStation 4, yeah. Xbox, P PC, you can probably play on you can play on your phone, all these things. So they expand the life of these consoles. Yeah. Like I I bought an Xbox one only last year. And I'm like, that's still five years out and I'm like, there's so many things I could play. Yeah. I don't know. I guess like in high school, like I remember buying the Wii. I remember Drake and I going to buy a PlayStation three. Then we bought the Wii U. No, that was the Wii U. Yeah, then we bought the Wii U. Then we bought Xbox One. So, like, uh -huh. every couple of years we were buying a new system to where now we have all three. Uh. And it's just been a while since we bought one. You're about a mile away from the microphone. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, I think a couple of reasons for that. Another reason is what, they were a lot cheaper. I mean, even the Switch, which is the cheapest out of the consoles at the moment, is like $300. Yeah. And that's quite a lot compared to mm -hmm. the, the Wii was half that price. Yeah. And like an Xbox One, yeah, you can get now, which you said, what we said is about six years old, probably more than that. You can get for about $150, $200. But when it first came but out, when it, it first was came out, so it was expensive. About, it was about 500 bucks. The mm -hmm. PS4, the, the reason that didn't do as well initially, you know, the PS3, because that came out at like 550 bucks or something, yeah. almost $600. And you're like, no one's buying this. And no. if you were to do that every three years, people just would buy it. Yeah, no, I agree. Especially when games cost like sixty dollars new. That's crazy too. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I'd love to be on the cutting edge of these games, but I just can't afford it. Well, no. If I wanted to afford it, I could, but I don't have the time to play them. No. <laughs> All right. So, what do you think the future for Nintendo is? Well, I would hope it'd be another game system. But did you think that they were because? They've kind of gained some credibility back. You know, they've already shipped 34 million copies of the Switch, which is it's not bad considering their sort of market share is definitely less than like PlayStation and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think they should do a virtual reality one, but better. You think? Yep. Yeah, but, hmm. the, what I question about is that's either going to be like the perfect move or the worst move. You know, that, that would be like a make or break thing. It's going to make the company, but break the world. <laughs> We're think? going Ready Player One on this. Well, that would be impressive. And there must be a company out somewhere doing that. But I don't know if they have the funds to be able to do that anymore. Like Sony might, and Microsoft might. That's crazy like, that Nintendo, one of the biggest companies, one of what, what you think of as one of the biggest, isn't really that big. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure they're still pretty, probably pretty, all right. Oh, yeah. Compared to Sony and Microsoft. So... So the PS4 came out in 2013. Yeah. So it came out five years before the Switch. That's what I was thinking. Like, I don't think that our... Like, I was thinking about our PlayStation. I looked it up because I was like, I'm sure we got PlayStation 4, but no. I guess the 3. Wii U must have been their equivalent. Yeah. And then it just didn't work, so they brought the Switch a bit early. Which makes sense. Yeah. It's it sold over 96 million units. Um, sorry, 91 million sold and 96 shipped. Um... So it's it's sold a fair few more yeah. than the 34. But as I said, it's been out five years, six years longer. Yeah. And then Xbox One. Let's see if I can find that. Do -do -do. It came out in 2013 as well, a couple of months before the PlayStation. And it has sold units, units, units. I can't find how many units it sold. <laughs> Excuse me. Um... It's usually right here. Why not? I don't know how many it sold. <laughs> but not as many as the PlayStation, that's for sure. Alright, and maybe they didn't release the data. There's a good chance they didn't release the data, that's why we don't have it. Okay. But it sold less. Anyway, so they've got some working up to do, but I think that the fact they released it. They probably know they don't have the technology to keep up with Sony and Microsoft, mm -hmm. especially if they want to keep things in-house the way they'd like to do. So they probably think, let's release this. It's it's going to be unique. They're not going to copy this. 
and we can grab a portion of the market. Yeah. Especially since they're no longer, I don't think they're doing another like, DS. This is going to be the equivalent. Don't yeah. buy a DS, buy this instead. Yeah, I want. Sure. I don't want to buy the next Xbox or next PlayStation. I kind of want to buy this. So they have me, and I'm a, a casual gamer who could take it on a plane, could take it to work if yeah. you really got bored at lunch times. You know, it's... Yeah. Main or thing, I want to take it on a plane. Or just, yeah. Or just sit and watch the TV, just yeah. play some Nintendo. Because if, if, I want to play a console while having things in the background sometimes. Okay. I do Because that's why I love Game Boy so much, because I could just watch TV and play Pokemon. Yeah. You know, and that's why I like my DS, and that's what I want to do with my phone. Yeah. But I want to do an actual game rather than a phone game, and this kind of works for that. That makes sense. Yeah. If you have the Wii, you, you'd have the tablet you could do it on. Yeah, that's true. If I had the Wii U. Yep. Shame. Shame. Whew. All right, guys. So that's been two episodes full of talking about Nintendo. Um, a couple of big highlights in Nintendo are the games. The games are great. Uh, there's no denying that they have some of the, the best games with the best characters out there. I think there's very few people that have ever played a Nintendo Mario game and thought, that's a crap game. Yeah. Do you know how tall Mario's vertical leap is? In, as if he was a full-grown man? Yes. Uh, no, two meters. I don't know. 27 feet. Wow. So that is equivalent to what, three feet in a meter. So that's equivalent to about nine, almost nine meters. It said that if... Eight meters and a half. Like, if he was like a real person, he could probably touch the rim of three basketball hoops stacked on top of each other. <laughs> yeah. Wow, there you go. Maybe the Mushroom Kristen's got low gravity, I don't know. Um, who, when you played Mario Kart, who was your character? Yoshi. Yeah, everyone liked Yoshi. Yoshi came about in Mario. So, Super Nintendo didn't have a Mario game. Oh. Uh, and so they actually reskinned the game uh, and put the Mario characters on it. That's why Super Mario Brothers, or I think it's Mario, is it Mario Land? What's the Super Mario one in the, in the Super Nintendo? Do you remember? Basically, it's a really weird format. It just takes them out of the Mushroom Kingdom and stuff and puts them somewhere else. And they're like picking turnips out of the ground. It's different villains, different okay. bad guys, but it's um, because they reskinned that I game. I didn't have that one. I had Yoshi's yeah. World or whatever. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's where, that's where I fell in love with Yoshi. Um, I, who would I go? I'd go anyone. I didn't care. But I just liked all the characters. They yeah. were fun. I didn't like... I was a big fan of Bowser. He was slow. Um, and I loved Smash Brothers. That was mm-hmm. a great game, as we said. Like uh, Tetris, I loved. I still love Tetris. I would, yeah. I would buy an old Game Boy just to play Tetris. In fact, I have the cartridge for Tetris downstairs, and um, I just don't have the Game Boy for it. I have okay. the DS, but DS doesn't fit the old games. Oh no! Unfortunately, only the, the advanced games. I'm sure you could find a, t- D- or a Game Boy somewhere. Well, I remember when I was in university in 2006 to 10, I'd take an old Game Boy. On the bus and play because I used to have like a, an hour and a half bus ride to work yeah. to uni, and I play on that. And I got I got really good. I got to like level eleven and twelve, which is like really hard to do. Yeah, and I got some impressive scores. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, so guys, let us know your favorite Nintendo game, your favorite Nintendo console, and more important, your favorite Nintendo character, whether it's yes. Zelda, Metroid, Link, Zelda. I said Zelda Yoshi. already. Yoshi, Peach. What was the other princess called? Daisy. Yeah. You guys. Luigi, Wario, Luigi, Wario, Wario Bowser, Luigi. Koopa, Goomba, the Koopa Ghost, Trooper. any of them. Anyways, let us know how you feel. Let us know if you've got any of the, if you've got the Switch, the Wii U, if you played it a lot, if you've got a new Game Boy, if you still play it. What was your first console? Any of this stuff is really interesting. Yeah, that's about it. Do you have yeah. anything else about what they should do? No, let us know. No. It'd be cool. Yeah. Um. Well, that's about it. I'm not going to do shits and hit this week because... Okay. I'm, unless you have something you really want to get off. No, I haven't watched anything else. Okay, cool. You I'm just stick to your hundred. Stuck. No, I haven't watched. You don't watch any of that. Okay, we're gonna. I'm hopefully gonna try and go to the movies this weekend because uh, there's a movie, movie I want to see, but maybe not. I don't know. And then next weekend we've got Spidey Man. Mm-hmm. Spidey Man. So we'll maybe go see Spidey Man too. Yep. And I think that's about it. Cool. Anything else? No. All right. Well, I've been Liam. I'm Kayla. And this is Mumblecast. Bye. Bye.